come back home. People have done the use React. Now, people don't they wonder how they feel fetch data or they work with data from the internet. So, what I would like to say, I like to use this library, which is called React Query. It's a very popular uh, library. It's a, they help us to they manage a lot of things for inside our React application. So, you will have to know, say, you need to understand the simple basic concept of how information they come from API and how they enter. I don't drop many videos for now. I'm happy to check my channel because many videos you cannot understand all these kind of things while they talk. So, the thing is, if you look for inside this uh, React Query website, I could drop the link. You can see, say, you get many efficiencies or you get many advantages, let's say, if you run on top of your application, if you do work with React and all those other uh, libraries, right? And you can say, you feel they get all this uh, auto refetching. Like, if you do many other things, maybe say, if you do infinite scrolling, if you do when the, whenever you click the window, maybe say they refetch, maybe the information will fetch back. If you do all sorts of things, if you do mutations on your API, maybe say, if you post and all that. But we're not going to do that one for this video because we are more in depth. And uh, if you want to make more in depth video about this, then make gonna let me know. And if you come to docs for here, now, this is not a project we could build for here. And this is not just daily. Uh, the quotes, I call them daily quotes. And they said, say, you're going to give us quotes, of course, in Pidgin English. We go interact with this API we do for here for this video. And then when for, we go build this application with React. We will see use React query to take to the fetch the data. And you see, say, once we click up, we feel they refresh the data. And it will refresh new information for us. So if I stop the server and I try run them again, you will see, say, we get, we will get an error. Okay, so this is if we don't get this error, and this is not because we set out, so you say, if something don't happen, if we don't get any information from the server or from the API, then make it give us this message. So, we are clearly the help of the handle all these states for our application. We'd say it did very easy for us to do. So, we could enter into our app. Let's go make a run the server again, make a make sure say the bot again, and then make we refresh the page or make we just even um, fetch the data again. So, the trial, you just say it only work well. well. And of course, if we can't refresh the page, so you can see, say, you can see, say, if we can't refresh the page, we we'll first uh, automatically get the data first, and then we go display. So let me see how we feel do all these things on top of React and React Query for here, right? So the first way we like to do is say, I would like to open up my VS Code, and for this my VS Code, I just did my working directory. This is my own one project, not the inside, and this we would like to do is say, we want to spin up our project as a, a new project for here. So first, first, make we run our uh, script. So to run that script, you could just like come open up your terminal. So if you click here, this three dots for here because I did this one. And if you just uh, click on this uh, new terminal for here. So the thing we would like to do is say, go like run pnpn. And one run the command would say, go use create a new this project. So we we'll say create, and one we'll create this. Now this this now, we can say, since we did inside this directory, we can say we want to create a dot inside this directory, all right? And I want to put that dot for here, that will stop. So this go tell you, say, okay, we want to build inside this project, all right? So since we know they use vanilla JS, we want to use React, we can say yes. Uh, we're not going to use TypeScript, we're not going to like it, maybe we start to use TypeScript because TypeScript is not like industry standard right now. So if we're not going to like it, maybe we start to use TypeScript, we're going to let me know for the uh, comment section. And then I'll maybe drop one quick TypeScript video for now, we're going to understand TypeScript small. And then maybe we start to use TypeScript for our channel. So, all right, we can go up together. So if we come here, we can just say I want to use this JavaScript for here. Now, once we run out at the JavaScript, uh, this will help us set up a JavaScript project. And what we like to do for here, we say, I want to just quickly uh, install the package where I want. So I will just say, PMP I would go say run PMP install. And then I want to say, once you do that, then I want to uh, I want, uh, run PMP run dev. So I will say, PMP and I want you to say run dev. You say, we'll clean that one, but since I use PMP, you can say, PMP run dev. So I will just press enter, and then it will take some more time to make it run. But since now, it will do fast, fast. So while this one they install, what I will do is say, I will just break down, come down small, and make I explain what we get for here, so that we feel they move forward, all right? So if you look for inside here, you can see we get some five folders. Uh, now we know they watch my videos, but I didn't know what all these folders be for here, but we can just explain for now, we know, quick, quick. So this is a node mode folder, and because my PNPM, we get all these our dependencies for inside this PNPM directory for here. So you don't need no what this one they have to say. This is not just all our packages that we need. And then for here, what we get now is the public. So now here we all our public files, or public assets, let me say, image, all these kinds of things, and then we will for here. The SRC now our source directory, and then here we will put all our code. So now here we will do most of the work. And of course, if I just minimize this one and this one, you will see this others where they here, we can take inside the root directory. So this is the main directory where everything is there, which now this now our ES link to the airport, the link our code. We get our GitHub for here, and then also we get our 
Uh, HTML file for here, which we will use as our entry point. So now Vito already configure all these things for us. We'll say if you run change this type of here, let me just say this is our daily quotes. So we just call our daily quotes like this here, and then we just press save for here. Correct. So that could now like that don't help us set up our project, don't set up all the install all the dependencies, and then we can't help us even run the server. Then why we run that command like that. So so what we go do we say we make we just open this command for inside our browser. So we just press control and then I will click this link for here. So you see press control and then I will click. So make we say for inside here now, we don't want to use this one. But instead, what we want to do is we want to clean everything, come up for here, we want to delete all this code, all this thing, and then we want to work with this uh, file for here. All right. So maybe we go back into our test code. If you look for inside here, since we already set this our daily quotes, make we make we enter into the SRC. Now the SRC for here, you can see this there's some assets. This assets are just assets we say now files we say you can use on the build, but you won't build, you can use on the access files for inside our our, our uh, SRC directory or SRC folder we can put here. So so if we start from here, just like every React project, we will look say we will enter into our root directory, and this root directory for this idle root, we will enter into our SRC main.jsx. Which is like this one. So we come into this main of JSX here. You can see we just import React and we just import the standard React setup, the React DOM, and we can set up import our app components. We will come to this component soon, but instead we will put some CSS for here. So we could just go into the index of CSS. Now I will drop the link for the description for now. So now if you go to the repo, can't copy any of this code. And I want the code I like, alright? So I will just delete this one and I will copy all this code here. because this video will be about CSS, now about React query, alright? And react here. So make I just press save here for this one, and then we will clean that we will come up that uh, index file for here. Now, if we don't replace that index file for here, the other thing we will need to do is say we're going to go back into the quick close here. Now, if you come into our main just JS file again, and you just say we will attach this ID for here, which will be use this object on top of this our React domain we did import before and then it just help us they render this one component where we just use the wrap uh, our app component inside all right this React or strict okay so that's how we they run this one here so now we could enter into our app component and for inside this our app component what we get to say we're going to clean everything we did inside this our app component why because we don't need any of the things we did inside again so I will just click everything for here and before we even start to be, do anything, make I just make sure say we get one extension set up because that extension they always let me to the you know arrange and step over for here. So what we're going to do is you can just come here since we use VS Code. Now we're not using VS Code, I don't know why I'm going to use VS Code. So uh, you're going to need to install this one. And this is now um ES7 plus Redux and plus React slash Redux slash React Native Snippet. And basically this snippet we do is they uh they help us to be uh, write React much faster. They help us to be deep ready made code and to be done quick, quick. So install that, set them up, and I just click uh, install. I don't want to do that. So maybe uh, delete even this uh, um, CSS file because we don't need that for the app side. So we will also use only that index here for the CSS, all right? So that's the only one we need. And then when we enter back into our app component for app.jsx, and then we delete that app. Dot JSX we will see for there. So make we clean up all the code. So I will just highlight down and clean. I will control A and write everything. So what we need to say, since we don't install that plugin, what we going to do is to say one run React functional component. All right. Once we do that, add React functional component. That's add LC. All right. Then I have I take quickly draw this React component. And since we don't use you know since React 18 or so, we don't need to be um, import our React at the top. Okay. I'm going like to open my browser for the other side. So make we pull the browser for this side. So what we would like to do is say we could first like to install all the packages we will need to be install uh, set up our project. So if you come into this task uh, React query documentation, so if you come into this installation here, you will say we're supposed to install the React query for with this command. So since I use npm and uh, pnpm, uh, I go run this command like this. I can just copy them. And now when they use npm, you just copy this command. Now when they use React, you copy this command. And then we will also go into our VS code and quickly install them. So if you close the server and then if you uh, paste them in here and if you run this command to go help us to the install React query. So if you have some kind of packages we will need besides even just React query, because if you look at our finished version of the application, you will see we even get a loading screen and we get some kind of that FPC. Now, I would also like to install this dependency. So I could just say, maybe we just copy this command also for here. And I will add them with the main dependency. So because React query is not installed, so we can just take a bit from that. I will just paste them here. So this will help us set up the uh, ES links for React query. It did recommend it so that it will help us to show the errors or warnings for our code if we do something wrong, we're not supposed to. We will see how in a minute. So what we're going to say, since we get that one set up, so we will install the other dependencies, we would like to take through this application. 
And because I want to say, maybe not, I'm one of the other one, I'm not add. But this time, instead of just copying the code, which one you say you want to install Atlas, so we'll feed it, fetch data from uh, our backend or from server anywhere. And then another one we would like to add, we say, we would like to add the React dash scanner. All right? So uh, spinners with the S, all right? So this React scanners, we can get different, different version and I could show that uh, once it installs. So maybe we just press enter from here. Now this will install the Axios, which we will use to fetch our data. And now whenever you have Axios, Axios not just uh, library or package where we will use to fetch data from the internet. It they not like fetch, but it they more advanced than fetch, or it they more easier to work with than fetch. They make fetching data much easier for us. And React Spinner, I make I just quickly show now. So if you come NPM website, uh, you will see say for React Spinner, you get this uh, downloads. So you see how many people they download them. Uh, they, 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 they up to date like five uh, months ago. But if you want, just install them and then you see the installation. And then you will just you know, see a storybook, uh, storybook. But you just come here, click on this demo page in case you don't know the demos, and you can see the demos. Say so these are all the spinners we will not be, um, get from this package. So, so the one we will use for here, uh, you need to say na, na this one here, yeah, ring loader. So now this ring loader, we will see, uh, I'll show now how you can customize them and all these kind of things now we'll for you. So we can go back into our PS process, uh, everything is supposed to set up. All right, so the whole package just says, and uh, the like say you know that range of say so maybe you run our code again you just say make sure say it will run so pmpm there now this will run our dev server for us we can go back here and uh, make it push the browser from that side but well, inside this our um, app component what we could do is say we would like just clean this in this this here and we could just call out say we want our uh, name and this name tag we could not give up a simple h2 this h2 we could not give up text of uh, daily quotes okay to maybe we add another div. I'm just use dot, but maybe we call maybe we call this div a class of quotes. Okay. And uh this quote for inside here, let me just say we want to add a h1. So we we'll say h1 and this h1, maybe we give up the class. Sorry, I could just say h1 with a, with a class of um one call this code. So we're we'll going to use DM for here. And now we don't know what in the DM methodology be go watch my last video on SAS. And of course, we're not going to understand what's in the uh, DM. D after an adult, you know, watch that video for this. So, so we we'll just come here and then we change that one to other than quotes. But once say since my PM, once it's a quote underscore underscore text, all right. And then once we do like that, if you just uh say let me add a Lorem piece of here, so if you just say Lorem, so this not just placeholder so text, so we'll work with right. And then for here, since we don't add the CSS, one of why this starts being like this. But for here, what we want to do is say we want to just add the P tag. And this P tag we can say in our class for quotes. So again, DM methodology underscore underscore, and then we say that the author this. So we could log down like this underscore auto and we we'll press start for here. So that will give us that DJ class of auto. And then we we'll just press DJ there. All right. So maybe now subscribe then. If I don't know the talk, we will talk for you. So we we'll just press on like this and make we scroll down. We can see say, everything on the work and it's only work as we expect. But if you like to so get this dash for here, we will just resemble the finished version. So this is now how our application is supposed to work. But you get some type of that that we could do and that now say we never add the button. So maybe we go. Uh, Add that button. So add the button is a very easy thing. So we could just say here our inside our main component for we could come up for that. We could come up for inside there for inside our main component. We could say what uh, a button. And this button we just want to just organize button for here. So we could say there's a new post. Okay. What we would like is so we would like assign a type because it's a button. Button. All right. So now this will let uh, the app know say now button component. We get for here, and of course, because of all the CSS, so we know the good that why we get all this stuff already done for us here. So, what we will do is say we will like to be now fetch the data from the back end, and I want it to run. So, make we set up our React query, and to do that, we will need first go into our main.jsx. Now, here we will first import the React query. So, if you just come here if you want, and if you just say import, and um, what you want import now, packages from. Uh, one important from React dash query. Now, so for inside here, the first import we will need now the query client provider. And this query client provider, now we're going to use wrap all our React query inside and we're going to wrap all our components the way we take make this um, React strict also. Now, so we could take um, wrap this one. Those of us now we don't work with Redux and uh, all those kind of other libraries. Now, so we they also do them. Um, just keep that in mind. So as we call this provider for here, we will come import our app. I will go wrap our app inside this provider. But now again, waiting we still need. So before we go do anything again, make we first import what we need. So we need the query client. So I could just import that query client here. And this query client, now once we don't set up this query client, what we will need to say, we will come need to put this query client as a client. 
So we'll say, uh, we want to make this uh, query provider. Make it just be, make we just assign them to new. And then if we just maybe just assign them to a new query uh, client. So this one will be just input for here. Now we just say assign for here. Some Sometimes you go to CC, if you feel assign them as a constant to here, if you just call them clients here, and then you will just assign them like this. Say you want the new uh, uh, query client, but uh, no waiting will go do, because waiting we want to say, if you just assign that client to here and say client like this. So you understand? This goes to work the same syntax goes to work, but me, I just prefer doing like this, so I'm going to get this variable outside and all around the place. So uh, make we run it like this. And now if you run out, you can see our application never break. So now when we don't wrap them like this inside this uh, query client provider, we mean say we feed the user inside this our app component, right? Because we don't wrap them as a parent component. So make we go into the app component and for inside this our app component, what we go do for inside here, we say we go to constant to the use this our query client. So make we go into the top for the side here and then we can just quickly import our query. So we'll say we want import, sorry, import, and we want import uh, our uh, Tansac query client slash query client. Make we say we want import the use, use, once you see, say, I type this use, you can see, say, I get different hooks when you say, I feel used for here. So all these hooks, when they hear like this, when I feel use these hooks, when I feel experiment with these hooks also, but I'm not going to cover all of them. I'm going to just cover some of them for now, all right? So make we say, we want import the uh, use query. So we're going to say, use query, query, all right? Just use query, not use queries with the S, but you go use use query, all right? So let me say, for inside this use query, what do you want to be say, one on the column as our hook. So let me see how if you use this uh, React client, how if you fetch data set from our uh, backend. So what you're going to need to be say, you're going to first set up a constant, sorry, constants. And inside this constants, what we want to say, we want to just assign them to a use query, all right? So this use query will be first import for the top here because now hook will they use, so we want to bring in that use query for here. Now, this use query hook, it will still give us some kind of things, but make we first continue before we go move on. So for inside this use query hook, it is taking an object, all right? And now this object, it gets some kind of keys and values where we're supposed to give them. So the first and most important key where we're going to give them now the, and what we call the query key, all right? So the query key now what we go use to the access our uh what do they call it? our queries and all the things what they do to the monitor our our state or how the data they come all those things now what do they use the monitor this request self now you go use so i could say inside this query key we could just assign an array for here this array now we could just say for inside here make we give them a key so the key where we go like if i make we just give them a key of quotes since now quotes where we won't fetch so if it's, if you give them key if you give them anything if you give them a goat if you give them a key it goes it no matter any key where you give them just don't say that, that key Way our React query will they work with, all right? So as we don't assign them to that string now like this, what we're gonna need the second most important thing we're gonna need now the query function. So to do that one for here, now you could just say you want the query fn. I used to say my VS code auto suggest all the things before I even move on, right? So that's not one good thing about uh where you do work with all this React and uh, TypeScript projects. So moving on. So if we say we want to call this our query function, we're gonna need to come call like a function for inside here, but because we we get this anonymous function or we put an anonymous function what i always like to do is say i always like create a function somewhere else so what i would like to do is say make we create a function i make we call this function get uh quotes okay so this function we never make and we don't know why we get this uh warning for here so i make we create a new file and we won't create this file inside the src directory make we call this file utils all right dot js you don't need to do this one, but me, I just want to make my code the modulus. So make I just they break them into small, small components. So for inside here, make we just say we want first import our axios. All right. So we want to import axios. And as we don't import axios for here, what we're going to need to do is say we want to create a function. So we just create a constant. I'm going to just call this function our uh, what do we call that function for here? So we can go back like I see. So we call it get quotes. So we can just call this function get quotes. And this get quotes function, we want to assign them to an asynchronous function, right? So we want to say this is not just an asynchronous function for us. And this function, what thing they do? We say we want to use axios to make a get request. So we can say we want const and we could just call them, uh, make we just assign them to areas for there, and then we could just say this is not our wait. Okay, and this await for here. Once we say we await this data, we could just say we want axios.get. And if we do this axios.get, what do we need to do for here? We say we go come put the string or the endpoint where we want. So the endpoint for this my backend server, this go help us fetch our data 
from the API. So if we say we want to run it like this now, we go come need way we say we go come return something from this function, and what we want to return are the results dot or uh, data. Okay. So once we say one that like this, we could also need to export this uh, our functions. Sorry, I missed the one for here, but that's the typo. So I go fix that one for here and make we go into here and go fix them. So I will just replace. Maybe when I go down, see, say I don't miss that one for here. So now when we get this function like this, we will need to import them. So if you just come here and press control and space bar, that will give me the option to auto import them. Once I click that one, it will help me import this function for top here. So this is now waiting me once. Make we try see the data where they get for here. So and this data object now will give us all our information where we need. Console.log data just on top here. Uh now here where I want for inside this our um component but just before the return statement i want console log the data so make we check our console make we see what team it give us so if we check them you can see say we get our message back from the back end and uh we they get them for inside our console for here so now make we just quickly display this data on top of our uh, page so and what we want to be say for inside it is our app component i could just like where we say we fit just display them for here so i could just clear all this text for here and i could say i want the data so I could say I want the data dot quote, okay, just like that. And if I press save now, you can see say we did see the quote for here. So, all right. Now, if you notice the quote before show, and then it can't change again. Watch you. If I click for here and I click back inside the window, it go fetch. It go make another request. If I click for inside the window, it go make another request all the time so make we say we want just um control this kind of behavior we say we don't want to say we click out and then again we come back to the page the thing will make another request so, i mean we don't need to do like that all the time you see i'll say data dot author okay so if i say data the author for here it will give us the author's name for here right so now we get these components where they work like this so what else again we need we just need control the behavior because now our app they change and we're going to need to put also when we click this button then make uh, it a fetch the data and make it you know they do them anyhow we want so make we scroll up to the top for here and for inside this top here so i could just say i want to add a comma for here and instead of running that function now what do you want to say i want to add refetching for here the guy refresh where I define and say I define refresh. Maybe say you know the refresh on window focus. So I want to set this on window focus, but I want to set them to false because by default it's set to true. So I could say I want to set them to false for here. And once I set them like this and I press save, anytime when we come to this page now, if I come here and I come to the page and I click, 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 and I open and I do this and I do that, you know, go refresh the page again. Unless I click this fetch button, now there you go, refresh. So if I jump tab and I come back. It no go refetch the page so the refetching it don't stop just like that i don't stop that kind of behavior so it's very easy to use all these kind of values for here so make we try add other values to this art and make we see how we even they enjoy them so another one way um react where they give us now is loading and this is loading we're gonna need that one but we could also need the is error okay so sorry i say us is error and this is error just now waiting to be not is error but we also need the refetch and this refresh will be a function. And then finally, I would like also make we get the um is initial loading or initial loading. Yes. So these guys they don't do everything where we're gonna need for, for us to easily build this kind of features into our websites. Quick, quick for us for you. So what we do we say for inside here now? Here, make we first break this component uh into another file. So what I would like to be say, I could just open here and I would like to create a new uh a new folder for here because uh we can't so I could just call this uh component. All right, you, you don't need to do this, but again, I like I tell you now, I always like they follow all this structure and I believe it's in a good practice, right? For now also. So for here now, make we talk say uh, for inside this component side, we want to add two components, all right. So the first component is where I would like to add say I want to add the quotes component. So I will just call this one like sorry. I'll just call this the quotes component, but I will just say I want to make this be the JSX, all right? And the second component, I will call the second component our loading component, all right? So we just say we want the new component, I want to call it the loading uh, dot um, JSX. So we could just say for inside this our quotes component, then at this component for here, we could copy them into this one here. So what I could do is say I would like to just cut them from here, and I want to call this component down into this D for here. So I will copy them, or rather, I will just cut them. And then for inside here, the quote component, I will just say I want RFC, right? We have uh, I want React functional component because of that extension. And then for inside here, what we do is say I would like just bring in this quotes 
component. Actually, this is supposed to be E. This is just supposed to be single. I think I change this one here. Uh, rename this also. So this is now our code component. And for inside this code component, what you want to be saying, we will just try quickly import or drop that component here. So we want to return out like this. Now, instead of returning this dot that, this dot that all the time, what we would like to be saying, we would like just use the structuring for here. And now we never know much about the structuring. Do you feel uh, what some of my previous videos where I explained the structuring well, but that just means say one come up values from this our object. So this is our data object. So instead of calling data dots quote and data dot auto all the time, data dot this, data dot that, we just want them in a more um, easier way. We fill it down. So we just say we want them as quotes and author. And then for here, we just say we want the uh, um, the code, sorry. And then also we want the author. So now the structuring, what will they use for here? They assign these values. We want to get them as props. Okay. So because we're not going to use any TypeScript for here, uh, then that's why uh, we suppose they get all these warnings and all that. And what we're going to do is say for inside our app components, we want to call now in show our components right so we want to show our code components so i could just say i want the code sorry quotes components and this code components what we do we say for inside here we go like just get all the values out of here we go like spread the props okay or oh, sorry spread all the data or get all the data and we want to pass them into here so whatever information we will get as data then we want to show for our code component so we can press uh save for here and uh, make we press save for here make we see if anything don't break make we know so I could just refresh the page and it try to fetch the data and it don't fetch the data. So right now you see say it they fetch the data, but what they do we say as they fetch that data like this, so it can't the load, but we know they get any loading screen. And also if we click this button, it know they work. So we could implement all those features for here. So the way we go do like that, we say we go first come back into our app.jsx and inside this our app.jsx, we go like just attach some conditions to them. So because we they use JSX, we go like say we want our curly braces for here and then we want the is loading. So this is loading now and we want to check other conditions like if to say data date the page and we want to check another condition which now if that data date the page and the page not the load again no then only that time now we want to display this our code component. So I could just cut them and I go paste them for inside here. So if you understand this code like this if you just look and you can see say if it's not loading no that's true and also if the condition will be say there's also data we say we get information that's true and only that time now you go show this our loading component and of course you go pass the data I go spread them all into here. Now once this our component get out you go show this data as the quotes and uh, also show the data as, the, as this one for here. What we're going to do is we're going to refresh the page again. So it's loading. Although we're not getting any loading state for here, we will show us say the load. Aha, it is say now you don't pass that data put for us for here. So you did display just the way we like make it show for here. Now make we add that loading screen because that one now not that very important thing. Make our users they know maybe they get feedbacks, right? So we can say again, okay, since in our GSX, we want our curly braces. We can put that for here. And uh, inside this curly braces, what you want to check now the is initial loading, right? So this is initial loading. We want that way to say only when it initially load, though, then at the first load, then I say it never load anything before now the first loading like this. Remember, say because we don't already set this fetch window to false and all those kind of things, then now why would they try to do this is initial loading? So this is initial loading. The way we go work and we say we want to come down, we say if not true. Then we want to set our loading. So if you just use a P for here and say loading for here, and uh, you know just throw some dots for here also. So this no be spread. This one are just not normal text, all right? So if we press up, say make we try make we press refresh. So you can see it's showing this loading here, right? And this now our initial loading. Then make we try add the loading to the button. Or make we try add the fetch. Where we say we click this button, then we like fetch the data for here, all right? Make we try to do like that. So I could just come here now for inside the button. Make we just. Uh, um, add a an event listener so we just say we want the on click event of course and this on click event what you want to say we want make this click event make it just take in an anonymous function sorry and this anonymous function we want just use our fire the refetch when we call remember say we don't already import this refetch where they come from our uh, use query hook then I'm waiting me the call for here all right so we could just say we want just call out anytime we say we click this button and that time won't fetch data again so we could just try it. just with that small line of code if we click out we feel they fetch the data. You just say the data don't refresh, you don't show us say a result to person way the friend or everybody no go get friend at all. 
I love that quote. So this is Aristotle for Pigeon. Very cool stuff, guys. So what we'll do is say we could come um, change this text from here as we don't run out like this. I could see like we maybe say we we even add our error handling. So make I stop the database. Make I try to get an error for us. All right. It's loading and it could just load and it could just load and it could just load and it could just load. So make we add an error screen for here. We say we feed the user and they check. We say come on if error do then show our user. So at GSX again we will put our curly brace. So we can say for inside this curly brace if it's error, right? If only if not error, then we want to do something. We want to make sure say only if it's error and it's not loading. Now if it's if there's an error and we say it didn't know the load again because if you notice the loading don't disappear from here. Now only that time now only that time we want to show this component we won't put for here so the component we're supposed to put for here and i just simply p tag if you just put the p tag here and then if you just call up if you make this one into a component self as a matter of fact i could even suggest make we do like that so if we say make we done like this you can see say now the page will load and as if they run out, it they load, it they load. And if you don't get any information and you don't go get, now only then we'll say that condition when it's not loading again, it will show our error message. So you see, when it's not loading, when this condition they met, say error deal, yes. And if error day, you know, just want to make it just show you error. But what if it's not loading again? Now that time we'll go get that kind of error. All right. So that's a very interesting thing where if you do with React Query. So make a fire up the server again. So to add that loading component, we could go into our loading component for here. And again, RFC, say we want to uh, create the React functional component. And this loading component, what we could do is say, we could come import a few things. So the first thing we could select import now our loading icon. Um, we could just say this loading icon with the important from uh, this package. We call the package React Spinners, dash Spinners. And this package where we import this loading icon make we talk say now what we want put for inside here as our return statement so we just say we want this loading icon as a react component all right so we could just come into this app component for here what i want to do inside this app component we say i want important for the very top so we could just import them so we say import and what we want important now the loading and one important from our components here, right? So as we get this loading component for here, what we'll do is say we go config the user to they replace the other loading uh, uh text we get. So if you use them, replace this one. So if you just say this is now our loading component for here, and if you press save for now, we could try fire arm, make we see like so we don't break something. Like I see, import this one, get this one, icon spinner. Uh oh, so I get a syntax error for React Spinner. Oh, I know important correctly. Don't know why it's spoiled. So what I suppose to be say, I suppose call the type for me. I be know just um, put that at first. So make my effects. So I could just say I define the ring loader, right? Because that's not the one way be like ring where I've been shown now. So if we bring it like this and I press save, this suppose import this component as our loading icon. And now all we need to do now just come up here and to refresh the page. So you will see we get our loading icon for here and they load as our initial icon. Of course, if we click here, we're not going to see them again. Why? Because nobody our is initial loading state for here. So make we try to fix that. Now, and also if you notice the icon and black, so if I refresh, you can see say the icon and black for here. So make we try to fix that. So we will go back to the loading component now and then we'll just apply this style once and for all. We want the color. Sorry, color. And this color, make we just set down to current color. So this go take any color maybe they use already by default. So if we change our colors for our um, other things to black or red or green, it go it go take that color. All right. As we don't set the color like this, make we set the size. And you see all the other props. So if we add for here, we we'll go just set the size for here. And we we'll just set the size to two hundred and fifty. Now with the size day two fifty, it gets some kind of other things way I would like to, but not be waiting we want. Instead, we won't make it push the button down. So we're going to just add some custom CSS to override this kind of behavior. So to do that, you could just say you want the CSS uh, override. So we could create an object where we go pass into here, just like CSS style. So we'll just say um we could just call them override. And then make we create this override variable. All right. So just for outside here, we just say make we create const override. And this override, I want to assign them to an object. This object with the here. Now here we will add all the CSS we want to add. So if you just set the display, and I want to change the display to block. I want to set also the main height. I would like to set them to 50 VH. And this 50 VH, as, as I don't set them to the 50 view height, now say I want to also set the margin. All right. So I could just say I want to do, don't forget to put that comma for here. So I could say I want the margin 
okay and this margin for inside a string i want to make it be 40 pixels uh, for the uh, top and bottom and i want to set the left and right to auto for here so once i press save this is supposed to give us that nice style we could try refresh this page and you see say we get this our loading screen uh for here so now that's our loading component and this is how our loading component could always they behave right so when we close this loading we don't need them again and then we could go into the quotes components for inside this code components we're gonna need a few other things what we're gonna need we say number one we're gonna need first import something and the thing we're gonna need import now so we want to import from tan stack of course we want to import something and what we like import now our use is fetching now this is fetching what we want to use and we say one day now what we need one day is and they check whether the data is fetching so we want to say okay well, for inside this our function we want to just say const all right so we want to just say is fetching let's say fetching okay and this is fetching we will just assign onto this use this fetching hook all right so we just assign this hook but what can i do we say for inside here inside this our quotes div for inside here we won't call this is fetching but once say okay well, if it's fetching then we won't do something otherwise we won't do something else right and now for inside here now here we will feed a run all the other code with one run so if it's fetching one can run our loading screen so you could just say okay well, if it's fetching then run the loading i remember we don't create them as a component so we feel important just like that we can say okay well, if that's the case say we get the loading then we won't come put the other components inside here as i press time for here you can see say react on the screen at me that's not because now jsx with the right so to fix this issue you're going to need to wrap up inside empty tags or fragments we really call them sometimes so i could just say for inside here i want to do empty tags for here and this empty tags once i put them here my uh, vs code not the scream again at me anymore let me try so we get the fetching state once we click on so the is fetching is running and then we get the data and then comes the show say ah no matter what thing you be just try be better one <laughs> about link one but it gets some kind of other things where I could even still like show now. I think we first go in back into the Tanstack VS um, uh, website. And for inside the Tanstack website, you could just like come into the dev tool for here. And of course, you get many other things where I could like show now. But if you want more in depth video about this, uh, make gonna let me know. So uh, what we could do is say you're gonna need just install the package for here, which now what we could do. So I could just quickly uh, show now how this package they work for here. Also, you're gonna need to learn about other concepts for here. So if you want to find those other concepts like mutation, uh, like um, uh, pagination queries, infinite scrolling for here, even for SSR for next years, if they work with them, if they so you server side rendering all those things if they run them for you so i believe say these guys and they get tons and tons of examples they don't give us everything we need so make me install this package for inside of our project so we go back to vs code for inside vs code make we just uh stop this one and then make i add this new package here confirm so we don't add the package now and uh, make we run our server again so i could just run pmpm run dev so make we go for inside this our main component for here now here we will just like import our React query dev tools. So we we'll just import them under all our components. Or if you import them for the top, it no matter. But just make sure say you wrap them inside your query provider. All right. So you see say this is our quotes key now. The key where we put for here. Now I'm waiting with the C on top. This our query. So make I bring down come down small. And you see say now if they check all our queries. If they inspect the queries also. So if you click them, you feel they see all the things where the queries they do. If they test and they debug and if they fire around from here itself. So if they also get the values. So the values of the where they get from our from our as data back where we display then now this data for here as the quote and as the author. All this data we feel they get our feed they explore them. This is we get the data explorer. We also get the query explorer. So all these ones now here you can see all the values, all the things. If you want to work with all these values for here, all these options. Uh, if you even check more information, any information, how many retries they, how many retries if you want, and also this thing they even they run retries. So these are very um brief video on just to show now how and if you use all these kind of tools. I know I know to cover all the other topics, but if now go like more in detail topics or more in detail about React query more, and let me know. Then I go do one video. Maybe we go build one project on top of this kind and um, matter we did for here. So, so I hope say when I don't learn something for this video today. Uh, if you enjoyed this kind of video, make sure let me know. I want to start today drop some kind of other videos for some tools. Will say I feel say what if if they use those tools rather than make the right code all the time. So if you would like to see all those kind of videos, make let me know for the uh, comment section. And uh, if you never subscribe, why not never subscribe now? I don't want to have this channel. I want to I want to share the video. I want to subscribe. I want to you know give your boy some shout out, yeah. So I will do that for the next video.